Okay, I was gone for a minute, gone, gone for a minute, I know, but I'm back now. Okay, I was gone for a minute, but I'm back now. What's up, nerds? Welcome to Table Ready. My name is Noah, and I am back. Now, this little video is really just going to be about why I've taken such a long break and the future of the channel and whether I am done with Critical Role or not and why that was even a question in the first place. Now, I expect that this one might be a long one and I'll try to cut out any nonsense that really isn't important through my ranting, but I'd appreciate it if you could watch all the way through because it does kind of identify some of the lenses that I see Critical Role through. It might help you guys understand just my perspective on watching the show in general. Now, some of the reasons why I took a long break were personal and some were about the show and the crew themselves. Some of you might not be interested in all of that. So I will make sure to put in chapters that you can skip forward to if you're either not interested in my personal reasons or not interested in hearing me crit critique like the cast or crew or the story. The first reason I took a break is because I need to dedicate some time to growing out this beautiful story Stranger Things hairdo. <sighs> On a more serious note, I want to start off by telling you why I started watching Critical Role and why I fell in love with the cast and crew in the first place. When I began my journey with Critical Role, I was in rough shape. I had just had a pretty serious surgery and was in bed basically for a couple of months, unable to move for more than a couple of feet to go to the restroom or to clean myself up. I couldn't play the role-playing games that I normally would. I couldn't even hang out with my friends and I felt really bad about asking them to come hang out because I was no fun. I couldn't do anything. So I spent a lot of time in bed with nothing but my TV. So like many of you, I hopped into this developing story on Geek and Sundry and it blew my mind. It was a fun experience where week to week I could be a part of a community that was watching the same live story creation that had never existed before. And I was a part of supporting that and supporting its growth and it was growing. Before the first campaign was even over, I was able to get some friends on board to watch as well. So then I had people to talk to about it. And campaign two, it was a blast. I got to enjoy my hobby with my friends. But things changed. I got healthier and picked up some of my old hobbies and my other friends stopped watching the show, which did make it less enjoyable for me to watch. So I started this channel. And being able to have my particular brand of fun with Critical Role has definitely reinvigorated my passion for watching it, but that means that I have to really enjoy doing this. Because if I'm not, then there's nothing really connecting me to the show anymore. The next reason why I needed a little break is I started to get tired of waiting. I felt like I was watching this show with the promise that all bets were off and nothing was really happening. The intro of Chet, I thought was great, but was disappointing and disconnecting for a lot of people who were watching. And I understand why. But besides that, I ended up feeling like I was waiting and waiting for something remarkable to happen, and the payoff just wasn't feeling worth it anymore. Until now. The timing of the show is also really difficult for me. I am in Ohio, so I, the show comes on at 10 and then ends somewhere between 2 and 3 a.m. And for me, that means even if I have Fridays off, I have to immediately go to sleep, wake up, and then try to come up with some cool ideas, some theories, or whatever I can as quickly as possible so I can compete with other channels that are in other parts of the world that can do this a little bit easier. The results of trying to speed up that process is, in my opinion, some pretty lower level content and a lacking of creativity and some pretty surface level theories and thoughts. I was starting to feel like some weeks I was just uploading content because I was supposed to and I wasn't really contributing anything of real value to the community. I began to feel like I was just spitting out content that maybe hopefully somebody can just enjoy having on in the background because they like the sound of my voice or something stupid like that. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, generally, I felt like what I was contributing to the conversation could have easily been seen from like Lubafin, who I think does a much better job at recaps, is a much more positive voice 
towards uh, the critter community and is really onboarded, whereas I'm a much more critical voice. If you take that and combine it with the fact that my most popular videos are ones where I either say something inadvertently incorrect or something that's just controversial that people don't like, it's just a tax to feel like the episodes that I put more effort into are getting less hype like this one, for instance, I made this video where I was able to interview one of um, the crew of the Legends of Vox Machina. I put a lot of effort into that video and it has some of the lowest views on my channel. Whereas the ones where I put in very low effort and then really made some mistakes ended up blowing up the biggest because they got the most engagement with people trying to correct me. Now, I don't think that's a problem even with YouTube. I think I could have just been better at getting people engaged in the comment section and make it more worthwhile for the community and for me, honestly. Now, there really wasn't a straw that broke the camel's back. It was more like a couple of weeks that made me weak. <laughs> and uh, I kind of decided already that I was probably going to slow down around week 20. I wasn't terribly invested in the emerging plot, and although heists are great if you're playing in them, I was kind of tired of them. We had just gotten out of like EXU Kaimal, which was a heist and I didn't really enjoy that much. Then we go to this heist and then they do the one shot on Red Nose Day, which was basically a smash and grab. I was honestly feeling bored, so I needed some time to just watch by myself on my own time without pressure to see if I wasn't enjoying the show or if I wasn't enjoying how I was watching the show. My time is mostly spoken for. I don't have a ton of free time in my day to day to do things like this. So I have to really enjoy it. I am a full-time student taking more courses than I ever have. I have to go to the gym regularly to keep my body healthy. I am a homeowner and I'm married. And for those of you who don't know, for a resource like time, when that resource goes down, the value of that resource goes up. So I need to invest in things that I find valuable. And as long as the channel's not producing any money, that means that it has to bring me joy and, and me happiness. So I need to be able to do things that make me happy. It has to have a benefit to my life. There's more creative content out there that I'd like to make. Content that isn't dependent on whether or not Critical Role has an entertaining week or not. I'd like to do things that uh, I generate myself, but I can't do that if I'm staying up till 2.30 in the morning every Thursday and then spending my entire Friday getting editing done. My last critique of the show and its cast that I'm going to make is about EXU. I know that people love EXU and EXU Kaimal, and I mean, Brennan's next level, so Calamity was next level. But I have a strong critique that I'm gonna make in another video because uh, I wanna make sure that I'm not misunderstood in my uh, dislike for those things because I really liked Abria. I like Abria as a DM. I've seen her in other things with in other systems and thought she was amazing. But something fell short, kind of fell apart in EXU and I, I wanna address that even though I would still give her like the most improved between uh, the original EXU and EXU Kaimal, 100% much better, but it still wasn't my cup of tea and I have some thoughts on that. All of these things to say, there was a lull in the show and I don't think I was the only person that felt that and I needed some time to figure out if I could fall back in love with the show. If I could invest my time more intellectually in the channel so that I don't get burnt out and tired. And if I could contribute to the community through making content that I'm excited about that doesn't just get popular because I mess up. I mean, there's a lot of room to make this community of Exandrians super pumped about all the content that's out there. So the future of the channel, what does this look like? It looks like me doing the critical review whenever I want to and probably coupling a couple of episodes together so that I can watch the episodes in my free time rather than in the middle of the night. It means I won't be so rushed so I can write better jokes <laughs> and think through my critiques of the show uh, in a way that I think is more interesting than just like my most instant response. And lastly, I want to create better content for all of us Exandrians here. There's such cool content to be available. Like I want to do some DIY DM, DM player tips. Um, I want to be able to even look at 
how to run a campaign in Exandria, which I do and I think I do fairly well, and how you can do that for critters. And lastly, I think I'm just gonna embrace the fact that I mess up, and I will intentionally make one false statement in pretty much every one of my videos, and whoever can guess it gets 10 gold. So to start it off, let's do two truths and a lie. I am 5'6", my wife is pregnant, and my first D&D character was a half-elf ranger named Forrest. All right, see you guys. Hold up, what you mean? Where you been, bitch? I've been in. This is merely the beginning again. What you been living in? The box. Thank <laughs> you.